Someone at work asked me if I wanted a Honda lawnmower, which I said, yes please, I'd be very interested in a Honda lawnmower, because we use the, the lawn now, Flymo's dying here. Um, and this is what turned up. It's a Mountfield lawnmower, cheap budget uh, push, push mower, with a Honda engine on it, that the Honda's sort of like an entry level um, vertical crankshaft in, uh, engine. Um, bit of a state as you can see, but it's free, so I'm not too worried about that. The idea is to actually see if we can get this thing to run. I think it looks like it's been sitting outside for quite a few years. Um, you can see the recoils all hanging off it. And the wheels are all a bit of a wonky angle. It looks like one of those buoyed up cars that you see going down the road that looks like it's come out of some sort of cartoon sketch show. Um, generally this engine is going to need a bit of TLC I think. We need to have a look at it, see what condition it's in. Before we even attempt to get it running we need to make sure that the, you know, the, the, the engine does actually turn over. It hasn't got a nest inside it because these air-cooled engines do they're sat outside the mice can get inside and block up all the fins things like that and also we need to check the crankshaft straight uh, which is a, a common problem of these engines being scrapped if someone's mowing the lawn hits a manhole cover it bends the crank and it will just shake itself to pieces in which case yeah sometimes you can straighten the cranks out but normally it's a scrap engine Okay, so let's start with the basic things. We'll tip the mower upside down and have a look see what it's like under inside. Okay, here's the underside, and as you can see the deck and the blade. Um, the blade that's in reasonably good condition, hasn't been ground back many times. Uh, nothing obviously wrong here, besides it has been leaking oil a little bit. Perhaps it looks okay. Um, so the next thing to do is, as I say, we're going to check to see if the crankshaft's straight. The simplest way to do it is just to release the blade brake once you remove the HT cap. This engine is never going to fire anyway, but always remove the HT cap when you're turning the engine over, just in case it does fire, because it will chop your bloody fingers off. So we're going to turn the engine over, have a look at the end of the crankshaft, see if that looks straight. If that looks straight, we'll go to the top part of the engine and have a look see what's going on there. These wonky wheels are probably just adjustable, actually. It's probably just the bolts need tightening up, so we can sort that out at a later stage if we can get some engine running. So with my foot, I'm going to push the late brake down and just turn the engine over. And you'll see there's no run out on the crank shaft. That crank is straight, so that's a good start. What I have also noticed though is when I'm turning it over like this, this engine's got hardly any compression. But uh, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. And there's a bit of a dragging feel to it, so I don't know if this is rubbing, rubbing under the cowl. So, okay, bottom end looks fine. So let's tip it over and start on the top. Okay, let's get the recoil off. It's only held on with one bolt, it seems as we've been here before. And the recoil's, I've got a broken spring, or well, it just needs re-threading. The cowl should lift off, which it does. And exposes the beauty underneath. Okay, so just make sure you're in shot so you can see properly. Bring you in a bit closer, I think. So, just looking inside, it looks fairly clear, clear of sort of like any critter nests or anything like that. Just having a quick look over to make sure everything else is okay. So, let me just show you the parts if you're not familiar with a, a lawnmower engine, ignition coil. That lead is the low tension cutout which goes to this switch here, which is activated by the throttle being in the closed position. It just pushes that switch off, shuts the engine off. Also uh, operated when the uh, blade uh, brake is um, released. So it's got a dead man's handle. When you release the brake, it cuts the ignition and puts a brake on the crankshaft to stop the engine as quickly as possible. There's a high tension coil there, goes a plug obviously. Carburetor. Um, this is the uh, flywheel, obviously, and underneath here, basically the end of the crank. And I know most of you know all this sort of thing anyway. Um, got a governor system here that looks like it's been mangled by someone. It's all bent up here. This, this should be straight and bent out more or less like that. That's a bit better. Um, and basically what that does, there's a centrifugal governor at the end of the crankshaft and it basically governs the speed of the engine to the throttle linkage. So the engine sort of, is tried, they usually hold them around three, 3,300 RPM, something like that. Uh, so what happens is if the engine's loaded up and it's cutting the grass, as the engine speed drops off, it applies more throttle. So it's basically like a governor on the steam engine, really. It's just, uh, all it does is keeps the constant throttle opening. 
Um, so initially it looks, as I was saying, the crank's free to turn, but that has got very little compression. Now, it could be normal that, it could be have, have little compression because it's got a uh, built-in decompressor. Uh, the other thing it could be is valve clearances are wrong. I thought initially this was an overhead valve engine, but it's not, it's, um, it's a side valve engine. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm sure it said overhead valve on it. I don't know where, I'm, maybe I'm imagining that anyway. So I think the next thing to do is we'll take the plug out, have a look at the plug, uh, see what that's like, and then we'll just have a look at the oil, see what state that's in. Okay, let's get the plug out, have a look at the plug, see what that's like. Oh, that's tight. Well, initially it looks okay, it's a bit sooty, but it's, uh, it's in good condition. Uh, so it doesn't look an awful lot wrong with that. So that's a good start. Okay, I think the next thing to do is check the oil. Let's just zoom you out a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So we'll check the oil here. Ooh, it's got clean oil in it. Wow. Okay, now checking oil on these, you don't screw the dipstick in, so you wipe the dipstick clean with a cloth or your finger, pack it in, take it out. Bit, bit inconclusive that. Looks like it has got oil in it, but it's a bit low. Let's do it again. Yeah, it has oil in it, it's a bit low, but it's certainly not low enough to, to worry about it for the moment. Um, so the next thing I think to try and do is find out why this is dragging so much because I'm breaking. I feel like it was dragging and it looks to me like someone's had the coil off and it's actually dragging along the side of the flywheel. Now I don't know if that is the case, if that's what's happened, but I think we need to have a look at that next to see if we can move that coil slightly further away from the, uh, from the flywheel. So I think what I'll do is I'll tie this clutch back. We'll tie the clutch back so the clutch isn't into the brake, sorry, so it's not interfering with the flywheel. And we'll have a look. This side of the uh, of the coil looks like it's actually touching the um, touching the the uh, flywheel, so that's no good. We're going to move that away. And you see one bolt on it, which is a bit. Oh, maybe that's that. It just a little bit there. So, yeah, let's reposition the, the coil. So I'll just we'll do that next and uh, pull the brake off, the, uh, the crankshaft brake off, so we can work on it a bit easier. All right, all I'm going to use to space the, uh, get the spacing right, basically as a, a feeler gauge, is this plastic uh, tray of a uh, sort of ready meal. It's about five, six south thick. Um, should be perfect for doing that. So basically, you loosen off the, the coil. Both sides. That should be the coil loose, as you see there. Slide that in the, the gap. Close that up and just make sure that's the highest point. I usually do it where the magnet poles are. I don't you see these magnet poles here on the flywheel? We're pulling on it now. That will also mean it will pull up tight to the flywheel as well with the coil in. So that's in position now. Hold it up square. Just tighten the bolts up again. One and two. You can just turn this out. That's better. Right, I suppose the next thing to do is see if we've actually got a spark. So that might be a case of actually spinning over with a drill. Yeah, I think that'll be easier. I think it's either a drill or rebuilding the uh, the in, uh, recoil starter. But I don't think we're going to do that. So let's have a look at the... Uh, let's have a look if we've got a spark. Okay, hopefully you can see if it's got a spark or not. I'll shade the plug so you can see, hopefully. And it's See that? It's a nice big spark there. No problem with that at all. So we've got a good spark. So the next thing to do is uh, chuck some fuel in it and see if it actually does anything. All right, before we do that, I think we need to have a look at this because someone seems to run it with no air filter in it. I obviously thought it would be better for it if it's had no air filter. If it restricts the power or something. So let's uh, just pop this uh, air filter cover off. It's full of crap. So that's going to need cleaning out. If we even try and run it, let's see if it's pulled anything into the carb itself. Loads of crap inside the carb. Ah, oh, you see the air filter, that's going to run well. 
totally so they disintegrated and it's blocking the inlet up so that wouldn't have helped it run we'll get all that out but well, that's what happens with these air filters as they get old they sort of just self dis they just disintegrate um, I didn't notice that choke oh I'll just knock the choke mechanism off that's the choke lever it's all falling apart held on by that plastic cowl so that's the choke okay so right, that looks fairly clean let's put a bit of squirt that uh, with carb cleaner just to clean it up a bit and we'll stick and fry some fuel okay get the carb a bit of clean up <laughs> I suppose what we could do whilst I've got the side off let's have a look inside the float chamber I'm hoping it'll be clean in there, but I'm not getting my hopes up too much. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. It's got a bit of sort of rust and stuff in it, but we can give that a clean up with some carb cleaner. So that's that's not, that's pretty promising. It looks like it's been run dry, which is good. So let's. Uh, do that a clean up and we'll uh, put it back together again okay you can see that's nice and clean in there now got rid of all the loose sort of rust and stuff so that should be fine let's pop that back on and uh, try and power it up right so this will fire up basically we've got a, a tank as you can see fitting the carburetor good fuel going to the car not coming straight back out of it again. Put that away. I'm going to try and start it with an electric drill. So, which will choke the cables just correctly. Choke on. In theory, it should start. Oh, look, it's fuel pouring out the carburetor. Okay, give one second. Let's see what's going on there. Give it a crack in the needle valve. See it's all leaking out the bottom of the carb. Oh, that's typical. Piddling out the bottom of the carb. Okay, so let's get the float bowl off again and have a look at the float needle valve. So we've got a bit of crap stuck behind it. Right, let's just check this needle float is actually working. So I'll give it a few. Expect fuel to leak into that tap. Yeah, so the float needle valve is working. Probably just had a bit of dirt behind it. So that looks good. Put the float chain back on, put the ball back on, and we'll uh, try again. Alright, let's start again. Uh, so the car's not leaking anymore. Let's see if we can get to start. Got the electric drill. Bit when mean sod, I've made a 
a foam element put in the uh, air filter that fits okay a bit of foam soaked in oil that should work fine I hope it's not too restrictive I managed to put the back on okay and uh, the spring doesn't seem to fit very well and if it does it just pops the cover off so that's just on gravity to the grass box so I've got some fuel in the uh, in the mower in the fuel in the fuel tank we'll see, we should see if it actually cuts any grass I'm turning up a bit, it's not throwing the grass back into the chute. It sounds like the revs are a bit low. I might check on the rev counter later on. But I think that's a success for nothing. Uh, it cost me the price of uh, two cable clips uh, uh, and a little bit of foam, which was kicking around in the garage. I hope that's of interest. Thanks for watching.